he is someone who is showing more and more people on the spectrum and off the spectrum how to find that for themselves. Uh, he is the co-author of a wonderful book called Come to Life. Uh, and he's been on the show many times before. Of course, I'm talking about the fabulous uh, Tom Island. And so I want to take a second here and welcome him to be with us. Uh, I, uh, Tom, how are you? I'm doing very well, Shannon. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. And I'm better that you're here. I was looking, but I don't have my copy of Come to Life here. It's at the studio, which I haven't uh, been. I always carry one with me. So yeah. you're not. I thought you might be because you're <laughs> you're always prepared. So um, and Tom, there are so many things about you. It's like, how do you fit all of them into an introduction for you? But you are an amazing advocate. I don't know what what words do you use to describe yourself, Tom? Do you refer to yourself as a self-advocate? What words do you use? Uh, my language preference is uh, I'm a, a person with autism or a person on the autism spectrum. Basically, my philosophy is that if you want to be acknowledged and accepted by humanity, you must first acknowledge and accept your own humanity. And I am so many things. I am a, a man. I am a son. I am a brother. I am a nephew. I'm an uncle. I'm a CPA. I'm a human potential coach. I'm an accredited speaker. I'm a marathon runner. I am a Jeet Kune Do student, I'm a Toastmaster, and I just happen to have autism. There we go. And I love that philosophy of things, and I love that list of things. I, I mean, I've, I've known you, Tom, for probably a decade now, um, and I remember the first time I met you and you were working as a CPA, and I just thought that was amazing. Um, and, I, and I was like, wow, look at that, and you were you know, you were a suit guy. You were a guy in a suit working a job uh, as a CPA. But I remember um, that filled me with so much hope because you um, you grew up in the same place that my son largely grew up until we moved a couple of years ago, literally in the same city town. Um, and I had the benefit of a lot of the things that you and your family, particularly your mother, your mother's a force to be reckoned with, a lot of the things that she had put in place for you, my, I got the benefit of because my son came behind you a good 10 years behind you, but there were already things in place, right? Um, and I could tweak them for us, um, but, I, but I was the benefit. So I was always sort of looking at you and then I saw you do something really amazing um, and scary uh, was that you said, you know, as I'm a good CPA, uh, and I went to school and I'm, you know, and I, I have this really good job, but I have a bigger calling. And I know that I'm more than this thing, this CPA thing. And you systematically changed your life up, like up, down and sideways and sought your passion and became a Toastmaster and, and became someone who speaks internationally and became someone who you know, runs these amazing, we're going to talk about, you're getting ready to do a triathlon, Tom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Old you did Iron all Man. of these and became an author and all of these things. And that's in the time that I have known you. So um, pretty amazing um, for, and, and you're still incredibly young. <laughs> like, let's say that. Um, you're a young, young guy. So, so impressive. We're so thrilled to have you here. But you, and you call yourself a human potential coach, is that correct? That is correct. It's a title put on through the Human Potential Institute. And basically, it's an online course that I took in 2019 that helped me discover uh, what the elements of life coaching are, health coaching, performance coaching, and personal development coaching. Because I think a lot of people on the autism spectrum are kind of being held back in life, whether they impose it upon themselves or people have told them their whole lives, you're no good or you won't amount to much. And so they just give up before they can even really set out on something. And it's been five and a half years since I put in my two weeks at my last a kind job. And I thought when I first got my a kind degree or my license that that was going to be my life's work. But when I was actually in the trenches finding out, wow, there's some actual difficult analysis involved or, and I was kind of crunching numbers at a desk and 
also hearing more and more stories of my peers struggling to come out of their shell. I realized I had to get out of that desk environment and go out to where the action is and make something of myself. So I, by becoming a coach and having given the history that I have, I want to show that you can do more than what you think you're capable of sometimes. And when you give yourself to a cause bigger and greater than yourself, that you not only help yourself, but you help others as well. And I think what's one of the things that's really important about it, Tom, um, is that, you know, there are a lot of people who just decide, okay, I'm going to be a speaker, um, but they don't, but they haven't done the thing that they're asking people to do. Um, there's a lot of people out there right now. And that always makes me bonkers, but that is not you. I, that you walked your talk first um, and, and learned a lot of things along the way and then now are sharing that with other individuals. And I think it comes from a place of real aut- authenticity mm-hmm. um, and that's pretty amazing, especially in one so young that, you know, it, it needs to be said that you were already, you know, working that like, you know, uh, what do they call it when you're in the career that you, you know, you said you set out to be. And a lot of people just would have been, would have been content with that. But um, it's very scary to step outside and say, I'm going to seek to more potential, exactly the human potential um, coaching. So this is now what you do. I think um, we want to show the come to life book that, uh, you know, I say book, but I almost want to say book workbook um, because there are so many things in it. If you're a parent and, um, and look, there you are on the cover of Autism Digest with Anita Lesko. Um, but I, I, um, if you're a parent and uh, whether, what's the youngest age you think maybe come to life would be good for Tom? So my mother and I wrote Come to Life with young people at 12 and older in mind. So age 12 and up. The premise of the book is to be a prequel to transition because as we think about our young people growing up, becoming adults, leaving junior high to high school or high school to college, looking for work for the first time, we've got a lot of questions for them. Like, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be? And a lot of times the answer is, I don't know because there hasn't been a lot of exploration as to what the options are. Young people, especially on the autism spectrum, have to actually experience it for themselves, get into the waters, getting their feet wet, so to speak, to see what it feels like in order to know for sure, and also make more decisions and make better decisions at that to evolve and become more in line with what they want to do. So this come to life, your guide to self-discovery is missing in a lot of young people's lives. And I think needs to be put into more schools, into more transition plans, into more uh, IEPs or IPPs as a guide to show people, everybody present, that life isn't going to come to you. It's up to you to come to life. That's why we named it Come to Life. And more and more people on the spectrum need this guide in order to find the answers they need to live the life that they want. You mentioned authenticity. It's about living the life that you want and other people can support you and have ideas of what would be good for you. But at the end of the day, the decision must be yours. Amen to that. And I, but I think a lot of parents are a little bit at sea because they don't know what to do. I was having this conversation with somebody recently because, you know, my son is getting ready to go to college and it was May 1st over the weekend and he had to definitively say which college he was going to. And I, and I was explaining to someone who doesn't have kids on the spectrum, I was saying, you know, it's hard because he can't, he can't envision Um, you know, it was hard for all of us to pick which college we were going to, but I think it's even harder for him because what he has exactly what you were saying, what he hasn't experienced, he doesn't know. So he can learn it from other people, but he hasn't had an older sibling go away to college. So, you know, we had to be doing some things to help him to get ready for that. But I think parents in general, we go, oh, I don't know how to explain it to them if I, if they're not understanding my explanation, but here's why this book slash workbook is so great because you don't have to come up with the way to do it. What happens is that there are exercises that you do with your child side by side with your child. And then you, you know, there are different things that you do and work together and talk it through 
And it's absolutely brilliant, Tom. I shared this before because my son and I did some of the exercises. And what happens is that you're doing an activity, you're working on something together, and it pulls back all of the layers and things get revealed. Things about you get revealed to your child. Things about your child get revealed to you and your bond with the child gets closer. But also what you'll see is that you're preparing your child to know themselves because that's the first step that you always talk about, right, Tom? That they need to Amen. know themselves. Uh, yeah, I've read the book. Um, so, but I, but I really want to encourage, there's a lot of parents out there that are like, ah, oh, we're coming out of COVID. I don't really, I don't know what to do this summer. Cause we're in this wonky summer where it's like, there's activities, but there aren't activities. And maybe your kid can do the activities. Maybe they can't. And you're like, I don't know what to do. And school doesn't have it really together yet. Get yourself this book, like pick one, maybe a week Tom to do with your child. And, and if you find that you like it, do more than one a week. Indeed. And I think this, this pandemic has really allowed, or at least speaking from my own experience, that the opportunity to take a step back and reflect on where you are, where you've come from, and where you want to go. Because when, a lot of times when we get put on a path towards something we don't want or discover that it's not what we expected, we're, we become in, engaged in disarray all over again. Yeah. So when we but, really but this goes to answer those questions, it gets better results. But this goes into, and Ganja, thank you for joining us. She said, I just joined What's the Topic, please, today. Tom Island is here with us. And he uh, has co-authored this book, Come to Life, and is a human potential coach. Uh, Tom identifies himself as being many things, uh, including being a person who's on the spectrum. And Tom has done many things with his life, but is now a certified human potential coach. And Tom, you've got something to offer our um, audience this summer if they're in that place of, I don't know what to do with my kiddo and just doing an exercise in a book isn't going to be enough because maybe your kiddo is 16, 17, 18, 22 and, or older. And you're like, I need intensive and I need it right now. So tell them about what you've got going on this summer, Tom. So I think a lot of the studies have shown that people on the spectrum want to hear about struggles or suggestions or solutions from someone who's actually on the spectrum. No offense to parents, but I think your children need to hear from someone who's actually been through the struggles that they've been through and found a way to come out on top. So I'm going to be doing something beginning Saturday, June 5th. I'm going to be using the chapters in Come to Life as a premise to engage in discussion and lead activities. I call it a group coaching session for people who want to come in and talk about what's happening with them, or I'll lead like an icebreaker activity. I'll have some clips from YouTube videos that help people see that they can be more than what they think they are. So the first chapter in Come to Life, for example, is uh, drive your life forward. So we'll talk about where you are in like the car of life. Are you in the driver's seat going where you want to go? Are you in the passenger seat maybe being a navigator telling other people where you want to go? Or are you in the back seat just like, I don't care. I don't have a say in where I'm going. Right. And if that's the seat that you want to be in and steps you can take to get to a better seat if you would rather be elsewhere. So look, that's just an example of some of the things that I'll be doing this summer to help young people make the most of their summer and have a better year and life for themselves. And so this is a, you know, there are there, how many sessions are there? Are there eight sessions this summer? Uh, there, there are going to be six. So six chapters in Come to Life, one uh, group session for every chapter on, on six consecutive Saturdays. So from June 5th all the way to July 10th, every Saturday and for two hours. Can, can people sign up for just, like they can look at the topics and sign up for just one or do they need to do all six? How's it going to work? So I actually just put the payment links onto my social media this morning. You can get one session at a time. And if you sign up for even one session, you're going to get a free signed copy of Come to Life sent to you because we'll be referring to some of the exercises in this book during the sessions. If you want to get all six, I call it the full guided tour. You can get all six sessions and you'll get the book and a one-on-one, -on -one, one-hour coaching session with me. Hey, so you have an well, option of getting one, two, three, four, five, or all six. 
Okay. So I always like the good, better, best model, right? And so I, I want you guys to know that there's the book and the book is a great resource and you know, it's very inexpensive, very cost effective. Where can they get the book if they just want to get the book, Tom? If you just want to get the book and I'm, I see uh, we've got uh, the social media chat going here. I'm going to actually paste in the link to getting my book in here for those that just want to order it and you're and i'm so happy to hear that you and jim benefit from it and that he's Absolutely. 18 years old already my gosh where's the time go? Know, where does the, where does the time go um so so i want to i and of course we'll we'll put the it'll be in the chat did you put it in the private chat or the public chat i'm not saying uh, no it's yet. going in the public chat right about okay. now okay and then for those who are watching the subsequent recording, though, we want to encourage people to go to Tom, Thomas, excuse me, Island, and Island is without the S. So That's Thomas, right. no S in Island, dot com, and then you'll see links to all of this there on Tom's uh, website. And, and um, also, so uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I've actually also started a new website based on the coaching business I've done, and, and you can purchase my book via this website, too come to life coaching.com okay, just when come to life come coaching. life coaching dot com. great so you could just go and get the book but for some of mm -hmm. us it's like oh i need a little bit more and you're looking for things for your teen or adult to do this summer to help them you know there's always this problem tom that as parents we don't know how to let go We've gotten so used to coddling, we don't know how to let go, but we see our kids getting older and we know we want them to be more independent. We want them to be more interested in their lives. For all of you who write in and say, all my daughter does is sit on a chair and drink coffee with a spoon, right? And you're like, and I don't know what to do. This is a great thing to do. So I would encourage you, the next, you know, next best thing is to have them do one or the full range of these coaching, group coaching things. They'll get to meet other people on the spectrum. And this is all virtual, right, Tom? They're doing it online? The, these will be virtual sessions. I could p potentially see myself months or years down the road making this in person. But I found actually COVID and that ability to reach people in other countries even while remaining at my own desk, that that's been a really, a really plus, right? a silver I, line to this great cloud. Yep, I agree. But so, so, you know, even better, you know, to do these group sessions gets them a social thing, but also helping them to work directly with Tom. But then you also mentioned that there is the opportunity. If you, if you buy all of the sessions at once, you get a free one-on-one -on -one coaching with Tom. But the truth of the matter is, is if you wanted to go directly to that and you say, I can't mess with the group, I want one-on-one -on -one coaching with Tom for myself or for my teen or my adult on the spectrum. That is always an option. Is that not, Tom? It is always an option. If you just want to book a coaching session with me, you can do that through the Come to Life coaching website. and You'll see book a coaching session, and then we'll be able to make that arrangement for you. And I have uh, several clients right now, a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients with different uh, situations, if you will they're going through like i've got a young man who wants to write speeches of his life and give them the audiences because i'm a toastmasters accredited speaker i help people with speech craft i know a gentleman in north carolina who works as a barista who wants to start his own computer coding business so i'm helping him with that i have a, another gentleman who's living with his grandfather and is actually considering changing genders so that's something he and i are discussing in our sessions i'm not going to give anybody's names out of confidentiality but yeah. Basically, I can help, and I do, coach people on the spectrum to become their best selves and live the life that they want, and that improves their overall quality of life. And I got to say this, you guys, there are some of you, because I, you know, a lot, I get a lot of parents that talk to me on a weekly basis, Tom, and if you're somebody who has a teen or an adult, and you're saying, you know, for instance, maybe the issue is they just don't have any friends. They don't have a social life. School is ending or is over or in COVID, you know, we haven't had the school thing and it really pulls back the curtain on how much of a life they're not really enjoying, how small of a footprint they are having in their own life. And a lot of you are like, I just don't know how to get them friends. Well, you know, Having a mentor, somebody who gets it, who speaks the same language, I mean, literally, as your kiddos, and who can be that sort of, you know, 
big brother to help them to identify who they are, what they want, and then help them to go and get it. Tom is a great, you can see he's a wonderful role model. Uh, we, we all, you know, no, no one would like uh, sneeze at having you be their child, Tom. Uh, you're a great, uh, you're a kind, caring, articulate, intelligent, you know, just really wonderful humanitarian. So what, what better role model could you possibly have than Tom? Um, and I got to say, you know, yes, it's something that you, you need to pay Tom for his time um, because that's the deal. But I, the nice thing about that is, you know, you can count on Tom. Um, and that, you know, you're paying for him to mentor your child, which means he's not going to let you down. When you get the boy down the street and say, could you maybe go running with him sometime? And then the boy gets a girlfriend and he's gone and you can't count on him, right? You can count on Tom. And because it is a professional relationship, Tom's going to be there to help your child. I also want to say too, how important it is for parents to understand this process. Um, and to understand how much of a life their child could have. I'm seeing a lot of us, myself included, Tom, that mm -hmm. coming out of COVID, we're terrified. We're just terrified and we want to coddle our kids. So I think, you know, if you're going to get Come to Life, I really think you should get two copies. You need to get one for the person on the spectrum and you need to get one for the parent. And I don't think it really matters how old the person on the spectrum is, because I think it would really, parents would benefit um, from, and I think, you know, having your own copy so that you can write in it and make notes and do whatever. I, you know, it's not an expensive book. Treat yourself to two copies. Uh, okay, so you have an analogy that you use, uh, or an, what is that called? An anagram, whatever you oh, use. Oh, it's the an word acronym. Life. An acronym. Acronym, thank you, that's the word. <laughs> You use the word life. Talk to us about what the what that stands for for you. So as I'm writing uh, Come to Life, I thought about uh, all the different people that have like the meaning of life. There are uh, religious leaders, philosophers, even Monty Python has a meaning of life. But I thought to myself, what does life really mean to me? And I learn best when I deal in acronyms, like a lot of information, if you can make it into one word in which the letters stand for something, that's how I learn. And so I've proposed and have put out there an acronym for life. So the L stands for love and relationships. The I stands for independent living. The F stands for further education. And the E stands for employment. And as you think about all your young people out there, autism or not, this is what you want for them, right? You want them to love themselves and have someone that loves them just as much. You want them to have a good life of independence. And I say independence in the sense, not that it doesn't necessarily limit them to just a household, but part of being independent is about being in charge of your life, taking and keeping charge of your life and making decisions so you can go where you wanna go in life. And further education has to do with not just going to college or some trade school or something after high school. It's also about being open to other people's opinions, being aware of what's going on in the world around you and keeping that in mind. And finally, employment. We want our young people to have a life of purpose and be compensated for the work they do and hopefully save some money for a rainy day. But unemployment is a huge factor of people on the spectrum in that it's difficult for them to obtain and retain employment. One of my biggest goals growing up was full-time permanent employment with benefits. Full-time permanent employment with benefits. So no part-time internship, volunteer, temp stuff. I wanted to get into an, an organization and grow in it and have opportunities to improve and move up in the ranks, so to speak, and while earning my keep and having insurance and such. Granted, after so many years of that environment, I walked away from it and found something better for myself. But don't we want something for our young people to set a foundation for a life that they can love and live? I don't think that's being done enough today. So when we focus on love and relationships, independent living, further education and employment or life, that's what's going to help people on the spectrum have a better future. Amen to that. And, and important that we give everyone that opportunity. 
Uh, I love that that was your goal, the full-time employment with benefits. And I love that you went and did that for a number of years and then said, there's something more. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think, you know, you had to have it to know what it was. Um, And when we think about it, I always talk about this, that so many times people discount folks on the spectrum and think that these things won't be possible. And I think that we need to, as parents, we need to get on board with that these things are possible. I mentioned before, your mother is a force to be reckoned with, and she (laughs) was not going to, uh, she was not going to, you know, you have brothers and sisters. She was, was not going to have you do anything less. You were, she was going to give you every single opportunity um, and you worked hard to be able to have those things. So we're not saying that it's just snap your fingers and wish it and it, and it comes to fruition, but there's things as a parent that you can do to set your child up for success. And there's things that you yourself, the person on the spectrum can be doing to help yourself as well. Mm-hmm. But the book helps you to go through all of that. We're running out of time though, Tom, and I wanted to leave time to talk about You have become like a fitness nut uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, It's almost like, you know, uh, like, were you ever, were were you somebody who enjoyed working out and running before you got the bug to do this? Or is this relatively a new thing? It's relatively a new thing for me because I knew I've always meant, or I, I feel like I'm meant for something extraordinary or to lead an extraordinary life. And I'd done a lot of, uh, like weight training and martial arts, physical fitness endeavors to better myself. But I wanted to do something that really helped me stand out in a bit. And I heard about people running marathons and only like 1% of the world has ever run a marathon. So 2018, I signed up to run a full. I knew I could do a half distance wise. So I went for the full. I want to get out of my comfort zone when I do these runs. So I ran one marathon, then I ran another. And then COVID hit, so I started doing virtual marathons, running around my neighborhood and keeping track of the distance and time. But I always ask myself, what's next? Or how can I one-up this? Or what's bigger than this? And there's a gentleman here in town who says there's an, uh, there's Ironman triathlons. He runs Ironmans in his spare time. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for an Ironman. And he explained to me, if you can run a marathon, you can run a half Ironman. And I'm like, well, I want to do something that's out of my comfort zone. I don't want to do something I... No, I can do so. I am currently training f- to run a full Ironman triathlon later this month. And for those and so, of you who don't know what yeah. an Ironman is, that's a 2.4 mile swim, 112 miles of bike riding, and a marathon, 26.2 miles of running, a total of 140.6 miles in less than 17 hours. Oh my God. I would need 17 weeks and a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about uh, I haven't even been training that long but but I have put on a little bit of weight from COVID the COVID-19 I call it and since I started training about two months ago I've lost about half of that so I'm coming to life now that I'm vaccinated now that I want to come to life grab the bull by the horns start making a name for myself and my coaching business to help people on and off the spectrum come to life too Okay, well, somebody just wrote in and said, my son is overweight and embarrassed. Uh, He wears his jacket all day in school. Uh, I'm going uh, today to meet a trainer, fingers crossed that she can help us, uh, that he could benefit talking to you. And I think that that's probably very true, Lucy, that, um, you know, having somebody who understands and, um, and is motivated, like, Like Tom, I mean, Tom, we said before, Tom's a really good role model. So I want to make sure that you have his website so that you can connect with him. But Tom, you know, can we talk a little bit about the, because you just said, you know, you put on a little bit of weight with COVID, um, but instead of just being, it goes back to our topic today, which uh, this week, which is acceptance, acceptance versus contentment. You don't have to be content with the fact that you've gained weight. You have to accept that you've had it that you've gained the weight so that you can start the process of losing it. Right. And, and so you were in a place where you're like, all right, I put on a little bit of weight, but I want to do this thing and got yourself motivated to do it. I I talk a little bit to this mom about um, her son doesn't have to be embarrassed. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it comes, it comes back to uh, the basis of come to life. When my mother asked me, Tom, if you could tell your peers one thing, 
what would it be? And I said, know yourself, love yourself, be yourself. Know yourself, love yourself, be yourself. It's my mantra and the basis for come to life. And I think especially in this day and age where if someone is a little bit heavier than usual, it it shouldn't be about how much you weigh. It's how you feel about yourself. And there's a quote by one of my favorite authors, Jack Canfield, that says, nothing will change for the better until you do. Nothing will change for the better until you do. So if you want to be better, lose some of the weight, improve your body image, it starts and ends with you. Well, we were talking earlier about how there have been some benefits to COVID, that COVID has made it possible for us to see how much we can learn and teach in different modalities and doing stuff on Zoom and and being able to meet virtually. But I, I will say that some for some folks, a lot of folks, there was a there was a weight gain um, during COVID. But there's there are those of us on the other side that I've never been somebody who's been big on exercise. But being at home um, and continuing to work, I think that that's been a very different environment for people. But I, you know, continuing to work and sometimes working harder and longer. In the first two months of COVID, there were a lot of us who were working in production that it, like a 60 hour week wasn't enough. We were working 80 hours a week and I was struggling. And, and so we, you know, I, and my, I saw my son struggling that he wasn't getting enough exercise. I've talked about here before on the show, Tom, we got a treadmill and um, put it in the middle of the living room. And I have seen how much benefit there is for me for self-regulation. So I've lost 40 pounds. I still have a long way to go in COVID, but I've lost 40 pounds. But that hasn't been the big takeaway. The big takeaway is understanding how much we all need to be moving our bodies. And if you have a, a kiddo, a teen, an adult who's on the spectrum, who's not moving their body in some way, whether it be swimming or walking or running or weightlifting or something, something where they're moving their, their big muscles in their body, I think it's very anxiety provoking. So I love that this mom is going to talk to you and that she's talking with a trainer. I shared the fact that we got virtual one-on-one -on -one training for my son um, during the pandemic because I couldn't motivate him to do the exercise. That's the other thing is the parents, we have to understand that we can't always be the motivator. Like it just doesn't work at a certain age, but getting so I couldn't get him to work out because I was coming from a place of inauthenticity. Inauth Even now, you know, after a year of working out, I still have a long, I'm never going to be somebody's physical coach, right? That's not happening. But getting him a trainer, and yes, there was an expense with it, but getting him a trainer, there was somebody else to motivate him and that person became their role model. So I think physical trainers are great. I think trainers to help with all of the other stuff, uh, like what Tom is talking about, really worthwhile. So we we got about two minutes here, Tom. Let's do let's do our closing thoughts here from you, and then tell us again where we can go to get all of your stuff. So my closing thoughts are that the more we can believe in our children and their dreams, the more likely that they will be realized. Because even from the beginning, when I told my mother that I love Star Wars and I want to do George Lucas's accounting, she could have told me that's a pipe dream. Get real. Let's find something more realistic. But my mother gave me a reality check. You have to pass tests. You have to go to college. You have to find jobs in entertainment. And I pursued that. So the next time someone or your child tells you what they want to do, show them what it takes to get there versus writing it off or discounting or dismissing their dreams because that could make a huge difference in their lives. We're, we're looking for someone to believe in us. And your children are looking for them or for you to believe in them. I'll say that again. Your children are looking for you to believe in them. So I want to encourage all of you to, again, go to cometolifecoaching.com and you can order Come to Life, your guide to discovery, and share in that process of helping your children that they want. Absolutely. So either tomisland.com, thomasisland.com, excuse me. I'll, I'll put those websites in here. <laughs> 
uh, island.com. You put it on Facebook. So let me put it I in did, so I that did. it goes to all the platforms. Uh, Thomas, T O M A S, island, L I L A N D.com. What? I'm, I'm um, actually considering changing my name to avoid all those. Uh, no, I think it actually I'm makes kidding, it memorable. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I, I do. I think that those those different. So there we go, you guys. I've got mm -hmm. it right. Tom uh, Thomas Island dot com. Uh, but there's also come to life coaching dot com. Mm -hmm. But you can get there from Thomas Island dot com. That's good. Um, so, uh, Tom, I really just I, I have so much love and respect for you. I think you're incredible. Always have. And of course, you know, I have so much respect for your mom. Uh, and it was such a privilege to get to follow behind her uh, footprints in the snow. Uh, I, everybody's wishing you good luck with your Iron Man. You're going to have to keep us posted. And I'm sure that people can follow you on social media, right? Yes, I am on all the major social media platforms under the name Thomas Island. No S in Island. And I look forward to receiving messages and requests from all of you. Thank you. And so, so, but people need to be signing up soon because th there's a limited amount of space in that group coaching that's happening starting June 5th. Correct. So if you need to register yourself or your kiddo, if you want to do that, and you need to do that soon, uh, because what I don't, I know we're all last minute Lulu's and we're like, well, <laughs> you know, June 5th is a long time away, but then yeah. a lot of I've experienced this, then you get there and the class is full. So if you want that for your kiddo, or you want that for yourself, get signed up um, as soon as possible. Then you'll get the workbook and you know you can do an exercise together before that. I really highly recommend that um, because it, it doesn't happen by accident. Uh, Tom is not who he is by accident. I know, I know that your mother moved mountains out of your way um, and instilled in you a, a passion for knowing yourself and, uh, and she got out of your way at a certain point. I watched your mother get out of your way, which is, that in and of itself was pretty amazing to see. I hope I can be as good. I don't know. Uh, I, I think you're doing very well for yourself. If that yeah, means. Jury is out. I'm, I, is I, I'm at that critical point where I got to let go a little bit. And it's hard. It's hard right now in COVID because we've been in this insular thing and so now not only do I need to get out of that, but I need to get out of his way a lot because he's turning 18. Uh, he's literally turning 18 on the day that your first class starts. So uh, after your first class, we're doing a, a drive-by graduation and birthday. So oh. as, soon as, your, as soon as your class is over, come on down, Tom. Uh, All right. I'll mark my, I'll mark my mark, calendar. <laughs> yes, please do. The invitations are, are going to be posted soon. Nice. Uh, so anyway, much love to you, Tom. I, I, I expect great things for you. We can't wait. When is the triathlon? It's coming up, right? Sunday, May 23rd, less than three weeks from now. Are you ready? I may or may not be. Time will tell. I, I continue okay. to train hard and there's no other person on the spectrum to my knowledge that has completed a full Ironman and I want to be the first. So I'm I think, shooting I for think that. you're going to do it. Just be safe. Okay. I sure will. Thank you very much for your support. All right. Thank you for being with us, Tom. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. Here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.